The native HDR implementation on Ratchet and Clank is really, really good. And I can definitely recommend you to sample and hold your way and beat this game with the best picture quality. But you know that I like OLED Motion Pro on this LG C1 OLED. I really, really love the feature. So I'm going to share with you the settings I am using in-game to tweak that native HDR specifically to compensate that brightness loss that we get when we use black frame insertion. And also, I'm gonna share with you the TV settings. Okay, it's a lot of settings that I'm using here on the TV. And these are my favorite settings, okay? This doesn't mean that these are the best and the only settings, of course not. I've shared so many ways to use OLED Motion Pro on the channel. So if you've, if you've watched the previous videos, you definitely have many options. You definitely have an option that you're going to prefer, okay? This is my preferred way to play right now with OLED Motion Pro High. This is what I'm talking about here. This feature is just absolutely incredible. We improved the motion clarity in 2.6X, okay? So at 60 frames per second, this looks better than 120 frames per second in motion, okay? This looks, at 60 FPS, it looks like 158 frames per second, okay? Yes, it looks better than at 144 hertz sample and hold display. <laughs> yes, it looks exactly, well, I'm not going to say exactly, but based on my testing, it looks like 158 frames per second. And if you have an LG CX at 60 FPS, yes, it looks dimmer. Yes, it flickers a little bit more, but it looks like 240 frames per second in motion, okay? Because you get a 25% um, scrolling, a PWM 25%, so you reduce the pixel visibility time in 4X, you improve the motion clarity in 4X, and of course the brightness loss is 4X plus, okay? It's more than 4X brightness loss, but the motion clarity is fantastic, so definitely give it a try so you can try this on the cx gx c1 g1 c2 g2 c3 g3 okay these settings are gonna work for all those tvs so let's get started let me show you the in-game settings first so the best thing about the native hdr on this game is that if you increase this brightness number you are Raising the visibility near black without losing the perfect blacks, okay? That's very, very important. So when I use this HDR analysis tool, even with this brightness at 100%, I still have zero nits. I still have perfect blacks, okay? But now that is not enough for me. And I still make sure that I get a better near black quality. So I tweak <laughs> the picture quality from zero to one nit, okay? So I basically fix from zero to one nit so it looks better, okay? So that's how deep we are going with these settings, okay? So I am making sure <laughs> that from zero to one nit, it looks better. To me, okay, in my opinion, based on my knowledge, this is the best of my ability. So these are the in-game settings I'm using. You see, we max out that brightness. We max out the HDR luminance, the paper white. I don't really care too much about it. It's affecting the rain and some particle effects, but I'm not going too crazy with that in terms of tweaking it because I don't think the rain should be very bright anyway, so I, I don't really care about this paper white setting. I just leave it at the default 200, but you can change it. It's up to you. If maybe you want to max that out. It's up to you. And again, the in settings I'm using right now just for 60 frames per second DLSS quality, and I'm just maxing out the graphics, uh, except the shadows. Um, I'm maxing out everything. Um, yeah, this depends on your PC. If you can get uh, 100 or 120, but remember, 
60 OLED Motion Pro High on this LG C1 looks significantly brighter than 100 and 120 okay so i much rather use 100 or 120 because the motion clarity is the best and you get no almost i mean i i do not perceive any flickering at 100 so that's a big plus and i would definitely use it but this is a very very bright game and i really like to enjoy that brightness especially when we have a sunny day very bright day so i i really liked 60. so my pc cannot give me 100 right now when i got to this level i was playing with 100 locked 100 fps 100 hertz looks absolutely amazing but then i got to this level uh, and i couldn't hit 100 consistently so i had to lower it to 60. Uh, but it's up to your pc okay so those are the brightness consideration between the different options. OLED Motion Pro High 60 is brighter than 100 and 120. And 100 and 120, um, it looks the same in terms of brightness, at least as, as far as I can tell, okay? So these are the, T, the reshade settings. Let me share with you that reshade preset that we are using to fix from zero to one nit, okay? So it looks better, so we get no ugliness near black this is my recommendation it is not necessary okay and if you feel like you need that last two or three frames that you are losing maybe by using this you don't have to use this with the tv settings i'm going to recommend you is enough we do have zero blacks but i, I recommend you this because it it does make a difference so i'm using this lilium hdr black floor fix shader Link in the description of the video with a tutorial of how to install reshade, how to install these new Lilium HDR shaders. This is a must for PC gaming, in my opinion. It doesn't matter which monitor or TV you are using for HDR. These new HDR shaders are a must. You need to learn how to, how to use them because they're going to improve your HDR experience in many 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 games okay so this is what i'm using lilium hdr black floor fix enable black floor lowering so i have to check that box and then i am increasing this old black point to 0 0.00092 okay that's the exact value okay this is this was tested a lot by me okay this is exactly the value that i want and then this roll off a stopping point one nit <laughs> okay so what this means is that we are only affecting from zero to one nit okay this is all we're doing with these settings that's it that's it that's the reshade settings and then let me show you the tv settings Okay, so on the TV, I am using dynamic tone mapping. Let me show you the settings here. Dynamic tone mapping, the screen brightness 50. And for dynamic tone mapping, I am doing tone mapping. Look, I come here, 1113111, and I change the mastering peak and the max LL to 2000. And the reason is this game with the HDR settings that I share with you has a max LL of 1758. Okay, it's like almost 2000 nits. So, dynamic tone mapping is going to push the brightness anyway. So, those last 200 and something nits, it doesn't really matter. So, you're pushing as much brightness as possible with dynamic tone mapping. Then, we come here to game optimizer mode. And I am using this FPS uh, game genre with the black and the white stabilizer in 10 to, do, to not affect the picture quality. So what this is going to allow me is to get a little bit more color saturation, okay? And it allows me to use the sharpness slider for some games that look blurry, which is not the case here. This game looks absolutely amazing in terms of the sharpness. Of the image so you see all the motion pro high 
We have a C2, C3, just solid motion. It works at 60 FPS, 60 Hertz. And let me show you the calibration settings that I'm using on the TV to increase the visibility near black. So we come here to colors. I have the color depth in 50 because that game genre preset on FPS increases the color saturation. So I have to lower the color saturation here to not get more clipping than what I should be getting. Okay. Then we come here to white balance and I am doing a two point calibration and this is because I like it. Okay. This is the SDR HDR trick fine tune for OLED Motion Pro High. And the only difference is that I'm not lowering the black level. Okay. So the reason why I am using these settings is because I like a lot no blue. Okay, so this is like a blue light killer setup. Okay, so this allows you to play late at night for long hours with less eye strain. Okay, very, very nice. I really, really like these settings. So now I do have a native HDR calibration that it is less inaccurate, closer to D65, but I haven't done that calibration for the SDR HDR trick for OLED Motion Pro. So I need to do that calibration. Uh, and as soon as I do that calibration, that might be my recommendation for everybody on this game. But I might still use this one because this just looks so good to my eyes. I just really, really like this. Give it a try, okay? But I, I'm still going to do the SDR HDR trick fine tune to perfection for all in Motion Pro with this 6500K calibration, okay? So basically what I did is I used this mobile app, this um, mobile app that measures the temperature to make this calibration, okay? I do not have a colorimeter. I am not an expert. I am not a TV calibrator. This is the best of my knowledge and abilities, and I really like it, which is what matters. So give it a try and let me know then the low point i'm not touching it okay and the reason is i have to increase the low point but if i increase the low point here i get raised blacks so i cannot increase the low point what i'm going to do is i'm going to fix what i need to fix with the 22 point calibration so i come here 22 point calibration and i start from the beginning code value this is the minimum code value 17 I increase red, green, and blue to seven. This is to increase the visibility near black for OLED Motion Pro, okay? Because OLED Motion Pro reduces the visibility near black. This is to compensate that, okay? Then I increase here this code value to 53. Then I change it to six, six, and 12, okay? And the reason is to keep the same color temperature consistent across the entire grayscale, I need to increase the blue more here, okay? Because of that reduction that I did with the two point calibration. So you see it here, code value 53, 66, 12, 148, 557, 235, 448, same idea, I have to increase more the blue, 300, 3, 4, 10. So now you see here the green is different than the red because the app, the mobile app that I use for this calibration tells me a green to magenta balance. And to keep that same green to magenta balance, that's why you see a difference here. But again, this is not accurate. This is just using what I have available, using the tools that I have available. Give it a try and let me know if you like it. Code value 350, 2, 2, 12, 393, 1, 1, 8, 430, 0, 0, 6, 463, 0, 0, 4, 492, 0, 0, 3, I think this is the last one, 518, 0, 0, 4, yeah, that was the last one, okay? So the last one is 580. Okay, so what we did there with that 22 point calibration was to increase the visibility near black and to make sure that the color temperature 
that I changed. So what I did here with the two, this two point calibration was to change the color temperature, okay? To a warmer color temperature. And what I did with the 22 point calibration was to increase the visibility of the near black and to make sure that I keep the same color temperature across the entire grayscale, okay? At least based on the mobile app that I use for this calibration. I really, really like these settings, okay? This is so good. My eyes love these settings. I couldn't care less about how accurate this is. It is not accurate, it's not D65, okay? This is warmer than 6500K. I love it, <laughs> okay? To the point that I know I have to do a closer to 6500K uh, or, or closer to D65 calibration and I haven't done it yet because I know I'm probably not gonna use it. <laughs> I'm gonna use this one anyway. So, yeah. This is the way I like to use my TV. So even if I had a professional instrument to calibrate my TV and get it absolutely perfectly accurate, I'm going to use these settings. <laughs> okay, because this looks warmer and I like it. So definitely give it a try and let me know how you like it. So for these settings, I recommend, for this game, I recommend this set of settings for OLED Motion Pro and for native HDR, I recommend the HDR calibration settings. So link in the description of the video to the HDR calibration settings that I shared that are less incorrect, okay? They are closer to 6500K, okay? And definitely closer to D65. D65 is a coordinate, okay? It's not a color temperature, <laughs> but Definitely here we are like at 6,000K. So if I try to get a 6,500K color temperature, I am definitely going to be less far away from D65, okay? But again, I don't care about accuracy. I don't care about 6,500K or D65. I care about the game looking good to me. And this looks very, very good to me. So let me know if you like it. Let me know if you have any questions on you know, how any questions you have about this reshade, the TV settings. Uh, the game is not perfect, okay? The game is not perfect. It has issues, okay? Those issues might be resolved. It's such such a good game, man. <laughs> If there is any issues, I'm going to blame Nixus. Okay, they did the PC port. If there's any issues, of course, maybe it's not their, their entirely their fault because maybe they, you know, they, they get rushed to release the game. They don't have enough time to polish. I understand that, but yeah, it, it does have some issues. But the game is so good. The game is so good. It looks so amazing. It performs very well from what for what I see on the screen. It performs very well and especially the the clarity of the game, the clarity, how clear it looks, how sharp, how detailed, how clear it looks. I love it. Absolutely love this game. So yeah, it has some issues and it's, it is not perfect. But yeah. This is very good, very, very good. So let me know how you like this and if you have any questions.